What's up guys, Hong OG Fitness. In this video, I'm gonna tell you guys how to get jacked for judo. Well, not just for judo, for martial arts in general and for your overall health and aesthetics, of course, if, uh, if you want, right? Now, I filmed a little workout that I did in the park, so I'm gonna narrate over it a little bit. And you guys are gonna see that it's gonna be a little bit contrary to what you usually see on social media because a lot of people will preach you know going to the gym lifting heavy weights uh you know doing heavy squats deadlifts uh, compound exercises blah 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 and i'm here to tell you you actually don't need any of that and no i'm serious guys like i've tried it all i've done it all and well i'm not saying that this is like the only way of doing things. Of course not. There's a lot of ways you can go about it to get to where you want to go, uh, to get bigger and stronger and all that. But this I find is, uh, this is what I'm doing now. And I find it's the safest way to approach uh, resistance training. Now, what you guys have to understand is that when it comes to uh, getting jacked, it's all about time under tension, right? You know, it doesn't matter like the reps, the number of reps, sets, or whatever, it, it really doesn't. And you don't need the weight to be heavy. You just need there to be a lot of tension. So you could create that. You just have to use your imaginations. Resistance is resistance. Your body doesn't actually know the difference. So if you put enough time under tension and you burn your muscle out, so essentially you're going to failure, momentary muscular failure, you're good. After that, you're done. Now, doing that in one set, because one set is really all you need, is very, very difficult because I don't even do it because it's it's hard, man. It's hard. So I'd rather do um, one warm-up set. Well, actually, two warm-up sets, right? One very light warm-up, then a second set where I warm up even, a little bit even more, and then a hard set, a working set. And when I mean hard, I don't mean heavy necessarily, right? I just mean that I put a lot of lot into it. So I put a lot of tension into it. And you can create that tension with resistance. And you can create that resistance with your body weight, with a bar, with, um, you know, just contracting your muscles and going slower. You're going you're gonna to see, like, it'll be a little bit more clear when you guys see what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm just going to play the video and then I'm going to, uh, because it is a 20 minute video, so I might actually run it a little bit faster. But I just want to explain to you guys some key points, right? It's That way you could look at the video and it could uh, it can make sense while you watch the video at the same time and not just having to um, catch up um, while while watching the video and you know the words coming out of my mouth. So honestly, guys, you don't need much. You really don't need much. Like you can literally get away with a towel, a towel. But here I didn't have a towel. I'll make another video for that uh, where I show you guys how to, you know, work out with a towel. Uh, basically, that would be more uh, so you could get you could hit your back properly. But really here I have I'm at an outdoor gym and they have bars. So I'm not even using like the high bars and I'm just using these, these three bars that are like, uh, you know, like where, where your feet touch the ground if even if you're under them, right? So once again, it's time under tension and it's the intensity of effort, right? Not reps, not sets, and not heavy weights. Now you can use up, I already mentioned that. <laughs> Okay, slow. You got to go slow. It, the, like you don't need to go fast. If you go slow, it's a lot safer for your joints. And that's the key in here, right? You don't even have to, you don't even have to move uh, to tell you the truth. You could do isometrics, you know, static, um, time static contractions. You know, that would be my, my preference. So it's not just holding like, you know, contracting your muscles isometrically uh, for like 10 seconds or whatever, but really just going until like it burns out or as much as you can handle, then you can do it again. Um, but um, yeah, you don't, you don't need to overdo it. You don't need to do a million sets. Like when your muscles burned out, it's burned out. Right. And when it's burned out, then you're good. So save your joints. And the reason why you want to save your joints is a little bit obvious to me, but sometimes it might not be if you're a little bit younger. Now, your joints are, they don't, they can't repair themselves. So if you screw those up, it's its done. It's like they're permanently damaged and you have to live with that. And that means living in pain and not being able to be able to move the way you want to move. Ask me how I know, right? Now, like I said, one set is all you need. Mm, 
And yeah, like it's really hard though. It's uncomfortable. Some guys can do it and I'm just lazy at this point in my life. So I just do free sets, right? I'll do one warm up, one light warm up, one warm up, one working set. That's it, you know? And uh, let's see here. I think this is, in my opinion, the best way. Because if you're older, you know, like you don't want to, it, it's time consuming to go to the gym. One, also it costs money. Now, if you don't have any money, this would be great for you. If you don't have time, great for you. If you have a dog like I do, great for you as well. Okay, because you can, you can bring your dog outside and do your thing. Um, let's see here. Where did I get all this? Like, man, I used to be a personal trainer at a gym. So I trained people. And my whole life I've been training. I tried every modality, every protocol that, that you could imagine. Kettlebells, uh, calisthenics, uh, was that convict conditioning, you know, that kind of stuff. And then I finally got to a point now where I think I've come full circle in my level of understanding. And when you understand things at a deeper level, and this is uh, Ido Portal that uh, that said this, Ido Portal, for you, those of you guys who don't know, he's like the, the movement guru, right? I'm sure there's new guys uh, at this point, but I think he was the one who, you know, started it all off. And he was he was saying that the more, the deeper your level of, of understanding, I'm paraphrasing here, the deeper your level of understanding, the more low tech your gear needs to be. And the less you know, essentially, then the more high tech your gear has to be. So I feel as though at this point, my understanding is pretty deep. And so I really don't need much to, to work out. Like I said, a towel would be enough. You know, if you don't have a towel, uh, honestly, you're, you're like a pair of jeans, you know, or a rope, you know, like really simple. Um, so who else did I learn from? Oh, the main guys, the biggest influence that affects the way I train at this point. Uh, Steve Maxwell, uh, then Drew Bay. And there's this guy now, he also learned from uh, Drew Bay and Steve Maxwell. And, uh, and these guys learned from other guys as well, right? There was uh, Mike Menser and then there was Arthur Jones. Like those guys, I think it was like in the 40s or 60s, something like that. Anyways, Jay Vincent, he's actually on YouTube right now. And he makes a lot of great content. I really, I highly suggest you guys go check him out because he makes a lot of shorts, a lot of videos, um, you know, contradicting the, uh, what the industry so-called standards are, right? He goes against it. He goes against the grain and then he backs it up, right? With, uh, with research, with science, with studies, all that. And the guy's jacked too. Okay. So now let's run into the video. Oops, sorry about that. You know, I'm going to put it at, let's say, 1.5. Uh, all right. So it's not too, too long here. Okay. Boom. All right. Let's check this out. Here I am at a park. That's my dog. <laughs> so I'm taking off my shoes. And taking off my ring, and you guys are going to see, you see there's like a, a low bar, medium bar, and a higher bar, but none of these bars you can actually hang, like dead hang from and do, um, you know, like, uh, what do you call it, uh, pull-ups and chin-ups and all that. So I'm here, and okay, right now I'm stretching. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, mobility, you know, wrists, shoulders, warm up. Okay, perfect. Stretch a little bit. Obviously, this is at 1.5, guys, so I'm going a lot slower than this. But you see how I'm never really going to stop. It's going to be 20 minutes, and you're going to see, like, in between my sets of, you know, exercise. So exercise meaning things that I do to actually grow the muscle. You're going to see, like, I'm doing some mobility stuff. I'm warming up a little bit. I'm also going to do some little bit of shadow boxing to keep myself entertained. And then 20 minutes is, is more than enough, you know? Because that's a lot of, uh, and this takes care of my cardio at the same time, you know, and honestly, cardio guys, it's really about cardio, cardiovascular, right? So that means your heart. So your heart needs to be pumping. And if you're, if you give your heart a good workout, it pumps a lot. Okay. Then that's, you got a good cardio workout. Now, how do you get your, why does your heart pump? Well, because it needs, you're contracting your muscles. So it needs uh, oxygen, oxygen needs to be oxygen and blood and all that needs to be pumped to your muscles and then come back. So if you work out your muscles consistently, voila, you know, but you see, you don't have to run. You see, look, look what I'm doing here. Okay. I'm holding on to bar. Look, I'm squatting down. See, 
working out the legs. And if you do this slowly, guys, you know, like you're going to see here, I'm like dip, working different angles a little bit. Okay. And you see, I'm taking the balance component out of it a little bit here. I'm working a little, my side kicks and my, you know, I'm using my glutes here, you know, to be able to strengthen certain muscles that are used when doing that. This is for my Uchimata. Boom, come back here. Boom, boom, boom. I'm telling you, this is actually a workout, guys. You know, so you're contracting muscles. I'm moving. I'm breathing. Control, right? And then, whoop, work out my Uchimata. Work out my form there, right? Come back. Go under the bar. Look at this. Non-stop. I'm not stopping. Pull-ups. Looks like I'm going fast. And, yeah, you can go fast. No problem. And you notice I, I, I like a lot of body weight stuff now because, oh, there you go. See? Now I'm doing isometrics for my lats. Come back here, tricep, see, right? And you see, I'm staying on my heels too, so I'm getting some, some tension in my calves. So it's all about keeping that tension going as you work out, okay? And I only do this, like, honestly, I'm not even consistent with it, and I'm still in great shape. But uh, if, I, if I do this, like, two times a week, you're in great shape, especially if you're doing a ton of martial arts. And look at this. I actually got this from from a gentleman who's on, on social media as well. Um, and he's doing this squat thing and then a push-up thing. But you could do this off the floor too. But I'm doing it, well, here, you know, like off the bar. And I'm kind of playing with it, right? Different angles, coming back down. Look, asymmetric back squat, right? So I'm pushing up against that and that creates tension, man. And back here, boom, 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 boom. You see? So then you can rest in between. So you don't, you don't need to rest, like, just stand there and do nothing. You can do some shadow. You're going to see me at one point bust out some shadow because, well, I'm not going to just stand there and do nothing and breathe. You know, I might as well do some shadow and get some uh, some skill development in. So one of my favorite types of push-ups, right? The uh, judo push-ups or uh, what would it call? diver, bomb diver push-ups or whatever. All right, but I'm playing with it. I'm you see here. I'm focusing more on shoulder, upper chest. You know, I don't want a huge chest because it kind of gets in the way and it rounds your uh, your shoulder too. Unless you do a lot of mobility work. So there you go. Boom. I'm here. You see here working out the legs, getting a little bit of stretching in at the same time. This is actually from one of my yoga practices. So. Oh, guys, I busted my back a couple of weeks back, and <laughs> no pun intended there. But, yeah, and that uh, that was no good, man. So I'm gonna I'm working on getting my my uh, strengthening my back by doing a ton of yoga. Because when I do a ton of yoga and I'm consistent and I don't sit too much, my back is great. But when I slack off, eesh, you know, so it, it could jam up, like, at, uh, at any time. And then after that, I, you know, I can't walk and stand up straight for a while. And this is all due to not being careful when I was younger, uh, doing heavy deadlifts and squats, right? And jujitsu, playing guard and, you know, being really stubborn and having like, you know, like trying really hard and doing everything I can and like rolling on my shoulders, like uh, knees to my, to my ears kind of thing. And that over time, man, could bust up your back if you don't, uh, if you're not careful. And I think that, I'm actually, I think my joints, I don't know, it could be it could be a genetic thing too. Some people don't have issues, but most people do, I believe. So yeah, man, you got to be careful with jujitsu for your lower back. Wrestling too, wrestling does that. So here I am. Notice my fingers in the push-up, uh, finger push-up position. See here, I'm just balancing, stretching out a little bit. You know, I'm in a position, boom. And now, okay, a little bit of shadow, right? Yeah. And I like I like making these videos for, for you guys, man, because I could look at myself uh, shadow boxing. And yeah. And the important thing, guys, when you, when you shadow, oh, I was trying to help that guy go get his ball, but it was too far and somebody else ran after it or I don't know, stuff like that. Anyways, I'm back. Boom, boom, boom. Jump around. Jab, 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 rotate. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm southpaw, by the way. So, But I believe you should practice both sides. This is me. Boom, 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 boom. All right. And once I'm, once I'm ready, back to 
whatever it is I was doing, uh, meaning exercise. So here I am jumping around. See, so I'm in constant movement, constant movement. Now I'm back here. Perfect. Stretch out my back a bit. Ooh, back to uh, judo push-ups, right? Okay. This is like a little bit of yoga thing. You know, you're stretching out here. Mobility, flexibility. All right. You could just incorporate this throughout. And if you go slow, here you go. I don't know if you ever, ever you guys did this, like try walking like a duck. Oh, man, it kills your legs, right? And then... You could play around with it, cross, boom, lunge, jump back up, boom, 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 shadow, see? And that's why it gets it gets really hard to to do it till failure, like I, like I explained, right? So here I am. I don't know if you guys saw the Sean Strickland fight with uh, Adesanya. That was great, man. Like the way he he, he did that. He was doing. Uh, he was using Philly shell the whole time. He was more squared off, so he could block the leg kicks and all. So I'm kind of uh, incorporating a little bit of that too in my shadow. And you know, when you guys do shadow, I want to give you guys a quick tip. Like you have to make sure it looks good. So you have to look at yourself in the mirror. Like me, I, I've looked myself enough in the mirror to know if I'm doing it right or not. And I know where my shoulders have to be, my chin has to be down, where my hands have to be, boom, boom, boom. Okay, and oh, see what I did there, guys? I was just like holding on to one, uh, one arm at a time. That, you, could, you work your grip like that as well. And look at this, you could do pistol squats, right? Look, I take away the balance component and then I could focus on the muscle, right? And here, look, I'm doing barbell curl. You know, I'm jacking it up. I'm creating tension in my biceps. I'm telling you, like, that's all it is. If you create enough tension, you can burn out the muscle. And then after that, it's about letting it rest, letting letting uh, nature do, uh, do its thing. And then you're, you're going to grow after that. You just need good quality sleep, okay? Good quality rest. What I've started doing is that I don't eat now at 7 p.m. I stop eating because I want good quality sleep. Because if you eat before, you're going to need more sleep, and the sleep won't be as good quality. So now I'm, you know, giving my back some love here. Boom, going down. You see? on the fingers, on the knuckles. I actually got this from Iron Body. He does it obviously better, and I haven't watched that video on it, but I saw the picture, and I understood what he was doing. You see, you could work out your wrists and your knuckles, okay, and your and your fists, finger push-ups. I mean, not, uh, you know, push-ups on your knuckles, right? And isometrics, just hold it. And here I am, fingers, okay, back up, boom, 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 doing a little bit of, uh, I forgot what you call that, but... It's uh, some footwork, some boxing stuff, you know, to uh, pivot or switch sides, weight transfer, you know, and it's about feel. A lot of it is about feel. So do it, slow it down, guys, slow it down. When you're doing things, slow it down, make sure it looks right, it feels right, and it's technically sound. So when you go too fast, yeah, okay, you, you like, you don't, you don't catch the mistakes. Like you might, you might actually pull some stuff off, but it's, it's crap, you know, and after that, it's harder to undo. So. And remember, slow allows you to make the movement smooth. Smooth will make it fast. There's actually a saying. It's uh, uh, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? But it's not that it's slow. You slow it down so you can make it smooth. Once the movement is smooth, then it, you can, it, it'll be really efficient. So it'll be fast. So here I am doing some, look, one hand on the other. Okay, so I got my left hand on the right and now right on the left. But you could go. You could you do that to put more tension on that one arm if you want. But the disadvantage of that is that well, now you have to do it on both sides. Here are my wrists. Okay, stretching out a little bit, doing some mobility work, just getting some movement in. And you see, these are light movements that are not going to damage your joints. You see how you could do all this and look, it's safe, guys. It's not. You don't need a gym. Okay, and look here, deadlift. Right at that at that range at that that uh, specific uh, part of the movement, and you're gonna see I'm gonna do it on the small one too. So now I'm a little bit more bent over, but I switch sides so you guys can see. Boom, isometric. You're gonna feel it here. You can't obviously you can't lift it up. There's no movement. You can't hurt yourself, <laughs> right? Which is great. And here, watch. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, what the heck is this? All right, there you go. Right push up and you see I can kind of use that bar to, to resist as I, I'm coming up as well so it's going to be harder on my legs and then it's going to be harder on my arms as well 
here we go. You see, left one arm, you see, and you can hang on with, you know, three fingers, four fingers. You can stretch out a little bit. There you go. See how did my buddy, boom, 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 right here, holding on to that, uh, that thing with my hand that works out your grip. And yeah, so this is just the first one, but I'll make more of these. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of them every single week. Well, every time I work out, I'm going to make you guys a video. Look at this. I'm stretching. I'm doing the, the knee, knee, knees over toe thing that, uh, that made famous by a knee over toe guy. And, uh, there you go. Boom, boom, boom. All right. You see how long is this video? Is this thing still, still going? Well, should be done soon. There you go. Back here again. Boom, 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 boom. Boxing, boxing. I'm looking, I'm looking decent, looking decent. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. There you go. Breathing, breathing. And done. That's it. All right. So let's see here. Let me go back to this. All right. So I hope you guys enjoy that. So the main takeaway, you don't need weights. Okay, you can use weights. I'm not saying not to use weights, but you don't need to. I personally, uh, I don't have a gym membership. I mean, there's a huge, fancy, decked out uh, weight room at my judo club, but I haven't been uh, because I've been injured. Uh, but also, I, <laughs> I just work out when I go to the park. I'm not even consistent, and I'm still in good shape. Now, I look the way I look in terms of body composition is because I know how to eat. So I'll make another video on that. And I, I find what works for me. And I think that some of these ideas are going to be good for you guys as well. So you don't need a gym. You don't need a, you don't, um, you can stay in, you can stay in great shape with just understanding some key principles about time under tension, about going slow to be safe, about burning out, right? Going to failure. And, and that's it. Like, well, a little bit more to it than that, but you don't need to go to the gym. Um, you know, like your, your body is your gym, essentially, uh, you could get away with a towel, like, and if you have a bar, it's like all of a sudden you can do pretty much everything. You can work your grip, you can work your neck, you can work your core, you can work whatever it is that you need to work out. Like you don't need fancy equipment. That's what I'm saying. But if you do have fancy equipment and you enjoy it, then, then go right ahead. But if you don't want to go to a gym for whatever reason, um, you know, you could definitely get in shape, uh, with absolutely nothing, nothing. Right. And I haven't been consistent with it, but I am going to be because my girlfriend called me small the other day, you know, in terms of I don't, I don't know what she's talking about, but God damn it. I, you know, so I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to get more like if I train seriously, like if I train three times a week like this, like three times, 20 minutes a week, I'll be I'll be pretty. Well, a little bit bigger than I am now, so I'll do that. Right. Just for kicks be a little bit bigger and more buff to show you guys also i want to make content and show you guys like how i do things and all that to give because there's a lot of things that i do that i didn't do in this video and sometimes it comes to me like on 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 the fly when i'm doing things and sometimes it doesn't but that's how this is how i train currently and i'm really happy with this i know how to uh i know i could um i can get as strong as i need to be to kick some serious ass. And so I'm 5'8, 150. But I with my skill level now, like I, I it's it's not to be cocky or anything, but like I could probably beat up 90% of the population, right? In the world. And that's just because most people suck, right? <laughs> don't train. So that's why don't be part of that 90% or or you know, or even that like be part of the 10% that could, actually knows how to uh, take care of themselves, right? It's important as a martial artist. And um, hey, it's fun. What else are you going to do with your life? All right, guys. Peace. All right. Where's the... Gah!